north part of Cuba. Can you see the map I have in, here in front of me? You see those <coughs> islands on the north part of Cuba? Yeah. That is Jardines del Rey. That's where we are right now. As you can see, it is separated from the Cuban mainland. So that's why we have to take a road to connect to the Cuban mainland and such. Jardines del Rey is composed of around 400 small islands. But the two most important ones are Cayo Coco and Cayo Guillermo. Okay? Today we have hotels from Cayo Coco and from Cayo Guillermo, all, of, all over the island. So Cayo Coco, you know why the name Cayo Coco? It was named after the white ibis. That is a bird locally known here in Cuba as Coco because of its white color. And it is actually the fourth biggest island we have here in Cuba with 370 square kilometers. Here in this island, you're gonna find most of the resorts we have. The International Airport, Jardines del Rey, which is inside the island, that's why the ride from the airport to your hotel is not that long, right? And there's also, also a commercial center that we left behind that is called La Gaviota. The second most important <coughs> island is the island of Cayo Guillermo. That's where you're gonna start Playa Pilar, then move to Cayo Guillermo and move to Imperial and located, right? This island is smaller than Cayo Coco, only 13 square kilometers. But at the very end of Cayo Guillermo Island is where we find one of the most beautiful beaches we have in this region. You know which one it is? Playa Pilar. Have you been to Playa Pilar before? It's just my favorite beach, eh? It's beautiful, yeah, for sure. And do you know why the name Pilar? It was named after Ernest Hemingway Boat. He used to own a yacht that was called El Pilar. And actually there are some things related to Ernest Hemingway back in the island. I show the clients that, that live there, the Ernest Hemingway Bridge. There's a bridge with three statues of Ernest Hemingway. There's a hotel that is named Iberostar Daikiri after his favorite drink that was the Daikiri, okay? So my dears, nobody lives in this island. So as you can see, the workers, we have to take the, this road every day. In the red and white bus, I don't know if you have seen it before, that those are the ones for us, for the workers. And if you notice, if you pay attention, they are not with air conditioning, eh? They have some windows, eh? And it's, this is summertime in Cuba, and it's really, really hot. I'm not cold, okay? I'm just protecting myself from the sun. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. So this, uh, this causeway is like 36 kilometers long and you're gonna see 17 kilometers are over the ocean. It's really beautiful. You know guys, uh, these islands in the, the north part of, Ciego, of Cuba were discovered many, many years ago by a Spanish conqueror named Diego Velázquez in 1514. So when he discovered this island, he named it like that, King's Gardens, in honor to the king of Spain at those times, Fernando the Catholic. So that's why you're gonna see that the symbol of this tour destination is a crown. And that crown is located at the highest point of the causeway that we're gonna see today, okay? So, um, you know the story behind the construction of this causeway? No? Well, many years ago, when Fidel Castro visited the province of Ciego de Avila, because Jardines del Rey belongs to the Ciego de Avila's province in the central part of Cuba. So when Fidel Castro visited this province, he was told by the government that they wanted to build an artificial lake in Ciego de Avila's province. And he said, well, it is not a bad idea, but the best beaches in Ciego de Avila are located in the islands on the north of the province. So we have to figure it out how to get there, right? So three years later, a group of seven workers began to construct this causeway. But when they finished one kilometer, one year actually they had to stop because it was a really hard job for only seven people without resources right and then years after when Fidel Castro witnessed the work that this man had made he said okay then I'm gonna give you all the resources and all the men necessary to finish this castle because here we have to throw stones and sediments without looking ahead uh -huh. and they did it like that in one year and four months they finished the first causeway ever been built here in Cuba, this one, okay? And well, uh, after this causeway, they make another one, the one that connects Santa Maria Islands to the Cuban mainland. Have you been to Santa Maria before? Uh-huh, there's a second causeway.
flamingos. Have you seen some, some of them? Yes. So you have to pay attention to the road because flamingos. maybe you can get to see some of them. Before, there used to be lots and lots of pink flamingos, but we had a really strong hurricane in 2017 and they were all, almost all killed with the storm. But now they are starting to repopulate again and we can see some on both sides of the causeway. Nice, eh? So this causeway has like uh, 14 bridges to allow water flow from one side to the other. And it has from two to five meters depth. And as I told you, the highest point of the causeway is where the ground is located. That's a flying boat. So do you have roads similar to this one in Canada? Like a road over the ocean? No. Mostly bridges, eh? Yeah, I figured it out. So guys, then should I let you enjoy your, uh, this beautiful view? Yeah, because you don't cross this causeway every day, right? No. I do. <laughs> so I will let you know, enjoy the view, and then I will be coming back with some more information because I don't want to get you bored so early, right? <laughs> Thank you.